Can we use water to learn how the moon formed? And elliptical galaxies are definitely gorgeous, but why aren't they forming stars? Hello space fans, I'm Scott Lewis and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. In order for stars to form, large pockets of very cold gas need time to clump together until the spark of fusion happens. However, when looking at elliptical galaxies, scientists see very little star formation. Now this can be because there's more smooth, hot gas in these galaxies, but even when there are observations of cool, clumpy gas, something keeps it from forming a star. The team of scientists from the Chandra X-ray Observatory have been researching this and have found evidence that supermassive black holes may be the culprit. Looking at a collection of galaxies and measuring temperatures, they honed in on six particular galaxies with cold spots in them. Now, though the cooling of gas should start showing stellar formation, they notice something else happening in the galaxies. Hot gas permeates throughout all the galaxies, but in the ones with cold spots, the hot gas is more widely distributed, meaning there's something pushing it around. Using data from Chandra, scientists believe that the supermassive black holes at the center is the culprit, creating jets of super energetic particles and disrupting the pockets of cooling gas in the process. Observations in other wavelengths like radio light were also used to create the heat maps and gain a better understanding of why these elliptical galaxies aren't allowed to be baby star factories. I guess we'll just have to rely upon galaxies like our own to watch the beautiful process of star formation. Next, how does studying water help us understand what's going on with the moon? You know, it wasn't until recently that we knew there was water on the moon which was revealed in a 2008 analysis of lunar rocks brought back from Apollo astronauts. Now slow down, it's not as if water magically appeared, we just didn't have the technology or the instrument sensitive enough to detect this water in the 60s and 70s. Scientists at the University of Hawaii at Manoa have been using a method of shooting ions at moon rocks to get spectroscopic readings of their makeup. This method is called an ion microprobe and is used to compare the amount of hydrogen in the sample with the amount of deuterium, which is an ion of hydrogen that has a neutron in its nucleus. By comparing the ratio of hydrogen to deuterium, geophysicists are able to derive where the water came from and the processes involved in lunar formation. The data collected is consistent with the theory that the moon formed from the debris after a Mars-sized object slammed into the Earth 4.5 billion years ago. This is known as the giant impact hypothesis. Add this to the existing evidence of common chemical makeup along with samples showing the moon was once molten and we get an even clearer understanding of how our moon came to be. So speaking of the moon, NASA and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter team are currently running a contest to celebrate LRO's fifth anniversary. There are five images that have made it to the finals and you can vote on which is the most beautiful in the Moon as Art campaign. I've included links in the description below, go check it out. Well, that's it for this week, space fans. Thank you all for watching. I do want to give a special shout out to Kyla Hill from Nerdist for featuring an article about the video and images that Katie Mack and I made for Beating Heart of a Stellar Graveyard. I really appreciate it and it was a lot of fun. Also, I do want to thank the Chandray X-ray Observatory team for their beautiful source visualization and support in tweeting out links connected to that video. If you want to get more Space Fan News, please make sure to subscribe, go check us out on Google+, Twitter, and Tumblr, and as always, keep looking up.